Hello, Nigeria. There's no better place to be, so don't you ever change that dial. What's up, everybody? It's Kavam Zasukwa, and you're watching Hello, Nigeria. Welcome back to the show. Now we have our very first guest with us in the studio. Today is World Baby Day here in Hello Nigeria and we're looking at caring for newborns. Now this is, there are several questions that young moms and dads ask. These questions we'll be answering today with the help of our guest. She's the founder of um, the um, leading maternity retail brand, Every Mom's Maternity Apparel. She is Omeni, Omei Yangs, and she's our guest today. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you so much so for joining much. us today. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here. Happy to have you. Now, when Leila and I were speaking at the beginning of the show, we talked about things that we dreaded the most about being mothers, and one of them was having sleepless nights. I think the first question I'll ask is, how long is a sleepless night going to last for? Let's really be honest. <laughs> Okay, sincerely, it varies. It, it sadly varies. So some mothers are lucky and their babies start to sleep through the night from four months old. Some babies still wake up at age one, so wow. it varies. And you're a mother about, yourself as well? Yes. So what were your experiences? Well, my two children were different. So the first one, I think, slept through the night maybe from one. The second one from about eight months. But the good thing is, as they go older, the timing gets better. Okay. But the sleepless nights cannot be avoided. Okay. I guess I have to make my peace with that. that trip. It's honestly going to have to. At the end of it, you can say you've paid your dues. So, True. there yes. we go. Okay, now let's talk about um, with regards to uh, milk. Now, there are several things. We know that several people have different opinions and standpoints when it comes to breastfeeding a baby. When I was much younger, at least before I attended a breastfeeding conference, mm -hmm. I used to say that I won't breastfeed my child beyond three months. How important? No, I was breastfed for just three months. Okay. I, I didn't turn out really bad. It turned out very well. <laughs> I turned out pretty well. So I used yes. to say I breastfeed my kids for just three months. And when it comes to breastfeeding a baby, first of all, what happens? What are the causes of moms being unable to produce milk? We find that sometimes when the baby is born, the mother is unable to produce milk. And how long should a woman breastfeed her baby for? Okay, so let me start with how long a woman is going to breastfeed her baby. And this is according to the WHO. So it's not according to me. So the recommended time to exclusive breastfeed your baby is six months. So the first six months, breast milk only, no water. No water. No water. I have to say that. <laughs> I have to say that clearly, no water. And afterwards, you breastfeed as, long, uh, as, um, as well as complementary feeding till two years. However, from one year, you can introduce cow's milk, so a normal like milk that the house takes. Okay, I actually didn't know that you couldn't um, give water after, for the first six months anyway. So what about people who mix breastfeeding with formula as well? Because I've spoken to a lot of women who have been through pregnancy and they say after a while the breastfeeding gets painful, so they find it easier to balance using breastfeeding naturally and formula at the same time. Okay, so again, that's a choice. Mm. As Olive said, her mother breastfed her for three, three months, months and she turned out okay. So it's a choice if you want to mix. Mm. But however, I would say if you are breastfeeding and it hurts, you're not doing it right. Mm. So it shouldn't hurt. Your baby is probably not latched on properly or not positioned properly or you're not sitting down properly. All those things affect how like the pain or during breastfeeding. Then about some women not having like sufficient breast milk, that has, there are different factors that lead to that. Some are medical issues. So first of all, we'll say, so like some women who have HIV and co, if, you're, if you have a medical issue, don't breastfeed. As long as a medical issue that can pass on to your newborn. But if it's just an issue with supply and all that, thank God Nigeria has stepped up their lactation treats right now. There are things you can take to boost your breast milk. And no, it doesn't have to be pap. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we always hear that. Some people hate pap. Like I hated pap. Mm. So pap for me was punishment. But there are wow. options now. All right, and how often should a mom breastfeed her baby? A newborn, so a, a baby that is just born today needs to breastfeed every two hours. And that happens for the first three months or so. Afterwards, it increases to about three hours. So you have no life really, just going to sit down breastfeeding every Well, hour. as I said, there's technology as well. So we have breast pumps now, right? So you can pump. Some people are actually very apprehensive of using breast pumps because they feel um, the milk is not coming directly. Is the milk still going to be fresh? So maybe you should help clarify on those issues. Yeah. So if it's a working mom who has to be back at work, maybe she took two months before the baby was born, has one more month after the baby is born, is it possible to express the milk and keep it in the fridge until the baby needs it? Yes. Is it healthy? Yes. 
is perfectly healthy, is perfectly okay, is perfectly fine. The problem with expressing where some mothers make a mistake, and that's why they make this mistake and say, oh, it's not healthy, is in the sterilizing of the instruments used. Mm. A newborn's digestive system is tender, is delicate, they can fall ill easily. So all your bottles, your pump, all the tubes, everything needs to be washed and sterilized after each use. If you do that, your baby is going to be fine. You can express, put it, store it in the freezer. If you have 24 hours light, which is, well, not that popular in Nigeria, but however, if you have 24 hours light, your breast milk in the freezer can stay between six months to one year. Wow. In a deep freezer. Okay. Oh, wow. Yes. In a fridge is about three to five days. Okay. Yeah. So what are the, uh, the fundamental and core things that mothers need to know when they're pregnant and about to give birth to their first child? Hmm. Okay. First of all, I think the first thing I'll say is breathe. Like, calm down. Because there's so much news out there. Like, it could get overwhelming at times. Breathe. You've been chosen to carry your baby, so you are sufficient. Read as much as you can. However, you still need to filter. Don't believe all you hear. So, first of all, we all, all the movies show us how childbirth is horrible and it's painful and it's this. And I'm not disputing or downplaying any woman's pain. However, I know of women that went to the hospital in between their lunch break and came out with a baby. They didn't have the contractions. They didn't so have... the experiences are unique to each woman. Yes. So as much as it's good to read and get prepared for the unexpected, don't take every negative information as is. Plan ahead. So now, thank God again, there are a lot of things that have come up that help us mothers. If you don't, if you, if you don't like cooking, there are a lot of people that you can stock up. Just stock up food in your house so that there's always something for you to eat. Because you'll be surprised the baby can take over your whole life at the beginning. So do that. Stock up on your necessities. So don't just go, oh, I have a, you know, most of us, when you have your first baby, we practically shop for the world. And we don't use half of those things. So shop for your necessities. And as your child keeps growing, you now get what you actually need. So that's what I'll say to a new mom. So shop for your necessities. Breathe. You've been chosen to carry this baby. You can't do it. Yes. And then also don't believe everything that you see on the internet. Filter the information so that you're not filled with fear. Yes. Let's talk about taking care of the baby. Now, when it comes to helping the baby have a bath, do you necessarily need someone to do it? Here in Nigeria, there's a certain thing called omugo. Yeah. So after the woman has a baby, it's as if the woman can't look after the baby. Her mom has to come mm -hmm. and help her for the first three months. They say that the first three months are the most sensitive of the baby's life. That if you don't help the baby have a bath properly, the baby could grow up with a body odor, something like that. Are those things correct? Okay. And then with regards to using hot water on the woman, mm. is it really necessary? Okay. So let me first of all start. The theory of Omugo, the theory of it is a wonderful theory. I love it because it just gives a woman time out, rest, you just had a baby, relax and all that. However, the, some practical aspects of it need to be questioned. So for example, yes, you can bath your baby yourself, but again, you just had a baby, you are exhausted yourself. So the, the, the presence of another person with you is fantastic. However, Bathing a newborn doesn't have to be every day. That's one. And it does, it's not even the normal way with which we bath. So recommended medically, you just basically need to put like a, a, a washcloth or, you know, these baby sponges in water and wipe the baby down. Yeah. So within so the you don't first, have a bath every day? You don't need to. No, normally you should just maybe have a bath between one to three times a week. Recommended as a newborn. First of all, Soap tends to dry out their skin easily and all that. But, okay, I know we're in Nigeria. People will say it's hot and all that. So I understand. Mm -hmm. But don't pour water on the baby's face. Don't pour water on the baby's head. If you want to do stuff like that, just use your sponge and wipe clean. That's what I will say about that. Hot water. Some people even use hot water on babies. So maybe I should deal with the, the baby first. So that is where I said, that's, that's the part where I say some practical parts of Omugo are not that good. Hot water on a baby's skin leads to burns. Like, there are so many accidents. I am close to so many pediatricians, so I get to hear the horror stories. So many babies are rushed to the hospital due to burns. A baby shouldn't be bathed in hot water. 
a baby shouldn't be massaged. You know this thing that we do, and you say, my, we are pressing the baby's body. Oh, wow, they are really? shaping the head. First of all, it's a myth that a child's head can be shaped. A child's head is shaped during gestation and during the birth, the birth, so how the baby comes out. So you know some babies are brought out with vacuums or forceps or stuff like that that pull out the baby's head. Those are things that change a baby's shape of head. But that whole, you know, my mother is molding. <laughs> you know how you say, that is a myth. No need to massage your baby with hot water or with rub. I've heard rub. Guys, this is a newborn, please, no. Nobody should throw your baby. You know, we do that thing. We want our babies to be strong. I've seen it. They throw, they pull. Haven't you seen that? Yes, <laughs> I've put them when upside people down. Would, like, pick the baby from one arm and be carrying the no. baby. And I'm like, all no. that, no, no, no. Like those things are literally dangerous. Shaking a baby literally can cause brain damage. Is that bad? Okay, I, I would never have guessed as much. So, yeah. what are some of the? In addition to this, you've mentioned some of the don'ts. What are some other mistakes? common mistakes that you see that parents make. You also mentioned the hot water one and um, you've talked about the Yomugo. Let's talk about common mistakes, parenting mistakes that mothers and fathers make. Okay, so some babies come out, whether they are male or female, some babies come out like they look like they have breasts and the instinct or when you even ask experienced moms in code, they say massage it, press it. No, that's, those breasts you see are just due to maternal estrogen levels that, that just passed on to the baby, they will go by themselves. So just leave it, don't massage it. Again, so many babies have been taken to hospital from, due to wrongdoings of that. So don't do that. Um, there is this, okay, I'm thinking of the Nigerian name because there is no point calling the, okay, I think we call it Oka here. You know, like when you look at a newborn, there's this part of their head. on the head. Yes. yes, so there are fontanelles and they go up and down. And people are like, eh, that means there's a hole in your baby's head. There's space. It needs to be closed. Let's pour. So you have some people, you don't want to hear what people rub there. Some people, are, some people say, go and get this herb. Go to the market. Those market women that mix something, rub it there. Put candle wax, engine oil, all no. sorts. No, exactly. Like, no. even you as a person, should anybody be rubbing candle Honestly, wax on yourself? You know. So no. And... The reason why, the, the sad thing with babies is that, you know how you as an adult, we can make some mistakes with our bodies and with our skin and we get away with it and we learn and we're like, okay, I will not do it again. With a baby, usually it leads into an emergency room. And we don't want these things to no. keep happening. I'm sure people would no. have questions. For new moms who no. have questions they want to ask you, how can they contact you? Okay, uh, you can contact me on Instagram as every moms. Every, the moms is M-U-M-S. Or oh, we have a website as well. We have a blog that we try to educate women as much as possible. So our website is www.everymoms.com. And you're also involved in um, people who are confused as to not wanting to overshop. They can contact you. Yes. Every Mom's Maternity Apparel. Yes. All right. Yes. Thank you so much. For Thank you, you for so having much me. for joining us today, Thank honestly. So but before we let you go, last <laughs> thing, what would you say is the best part about being a mom? <sighs> Okay, I think I'm going to end with a famous quote first. Okay. So there's, uh, there's a saying by Jill Churchill that says, there are a million ways to be a mother, but there's only, there, there, are, there are a million ways to be a good mom, but there's no, per rather, there's no perfect way to be a mom. Mm. There are a million ways to be a good mother. So indirectly, even if you are different, you are a good mother. Well, thank you thank so you. Thank much you for so joining much. us today. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.